Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our legendary Radius Shusia campaign. We picked things up for episode 3 from turn 9 in the spring season of 192. So we end the last episode by finishing off Ingshaw's last settlement. He has a spare army on the side, which is actually Don't wonderful because I can get a really lucrative peace deal with him. Uh, the recent losses in battle, military strength swings, uh, really helps us out. So we can definitely, you know, receive a lot of good stuff from him. Not gonna do that. Let's see, does he have any item he's not using? Nope. Unfortunately, he does not. But we can pretty much bankrupt him. So that's a little bit too much, I know. I'm just tweaking with the numbers to see what we can get here. I'm gonna prefer cash because I don't know how many turns he's gonna stay alive. So even though the per turn is gonna be worth a lot more, we're not gonna take that risk. Okay, not the luckiest number if you're Chinese and believe in four sounding like death, uh, but we'll take this peace deal. If anyone's gonna oh. die, it's gonna be him. All right, so that's done. Uh, we don't have to lose any more favors uh, in that regard. Uh, that's something we have to balance. Imper comes of age quite early for the Radius mod. Like, does everyone come of age super young? Is that what this is? Uh, but regardless, we also have enough points to take the faction rank up, which we will. So as you can see, the points are in armies, apparently. Okay, I like that. Administrators and assignments. I kind of wanted to do trade deal to get this maxed out. But now that I'm looking at it, maybe it's not worth it. I don't really need the 20 points of diplomatic relations with all factions, given that we have those chests. And also we mentioned how relationship, you know, you can game the relationship with the faction you want pretty easily. Um, it seems like each army bar provides two armies. That's how we end up with so many armies. Not the Radius mod just gives you a ton of army. I guess they do, but on top of that... Oh, they also... Linearize the milestone rewards. So each one gives you something. And the upkeep is very low, only 8%. It's much higher without that. Uh, but I guess for Radius it doesn't matter. They already lower the, the upkeep by so much that it really doesn't matter. They increase the food here from 10 to 15. Okay, I think looking at the thing, I'm going to want at least a few more administrators. I have three commander coming up. Actually, we're only keeping, yeah, we're keeping three. At least. So I want at least three. And then we're going to expand into the Nunman faction territories. And I also think we get way more points than we should. I think they're going to allow us to fill up much more than the base game amount. Okay, so I feel like I should just go to four for now. Yeah, let's bump up that experience all the way to 25%. That's a huge leap from 5%. The benefit's going to be much more substantial than anything else. Let's go for that. I might not, you know, utilize all my assignment extra ones, but at the very least, we want to have it. Here, there's a lot of commerce to boost here. We want to assign administrators uh, in places we want to build up. So, Xu Huang, with all his excellent bonuses, should actually go to Yudin, because Yudin has a lot more income. He's going to go here. Jeldra is going to get someone as well. We'll have the burnt buff on these, but do I trust them to not turn on us? I mean, we, we might as well use him. But then we have to go down this route. Maybe we don't use him for assignment. No, see, he's better off on the field. Maybe Jamian's the one we need to cancel and put as administrator. Yeah, there's T here. Unless we want to recruit a new one. That's, there's always that option. 
There's no sentinels for us to recruit. Now, is he any good? Because he's in our pool, I can look at his skill tree. No, that's not going to cut it. We also forget to flip this. That's a big mistake, actually. The income from peasantry is increased here to 15%. I think it used to be just 10%. Oh, no, it's, no, it used to be 20%, actually. It's decreased. This is actually a nerf. Okay, that's the 10% armor that the general we fought, that, that's a spy for us, is getting. I'm going to grab this. And... I might make him an administrator instead. Debatable. But I think maybe Jamin should come back out. Be a administrator for us. Alright, we pieced out with them. We leveled up again. We really want night battle. Even though fire arrow doesn't really impact our crossbowmen. But night battle is going to be super strong. And then we'll come down here and get flaming shot afterward. We'll keep the army intact. We're going to do the sailing down to attack. Call down from behind. They will hover over here. We do have a bit of a shortage of assignment characters. I mean, I could recall one of them to go back. It would be her. Do assignments. Although she's doing a pretty good job of keeping everyone happy here, so I'm not going to really touch on that. He's also on assignment, but I think I'm definitely going to set him up for the battlefield. You... I don't know what to do with you. Probably battle related. I mean, given that you're a family member, we're probably going to send you off to become a, va a faction leader in the future. Alright, so I think that's a wrap. We have one opponent still left. Okay. And the deals with him, we pieced out, so five turns after we get done with Goldown, we'll take care of them. Alright, I think we're good. We'll set up a new administrator next turn. Building wise, there's something being built everywhere already. Port, we do have new positions, but faction council, it is still every spring, right? Which is something. It is spring now. Okay. That's a different thing now. Now we want to have people in these positions who can get. Okay, I'm going to put Jom in here because I know I can replace him next turn because he's going to go straight into administrator. He's not going to be unhappy. We get multiple Grand com uh, Commandants. And each of them get 5%. Interesting. Uh Huh. Very interesting. And what, what about this position? Is there is there a multiple one? Yes, there is. You get up to... But what about... These. I guess we wouldn't get multiple ones here, so splitting the position right now will make the most sense for us. This is not a set item, so it could be anything. I'd rather get income at this point. Keeping one of our generals happy, or increasing garrison, public order, and replenishment for garrison. There's no one fighting them. Both of these sound pretty silly, but I guess we'll keep our son happy for 200. Cheap way to turn our only red face into a green one. Alright, we're not taking advantage of any splendor gains right now, which it's fine. We'll set them up once we get a little bit more land. Right now I'm pretty happy just controlling the land, given how lucrative the land is in this mod. Right, I think we're good. I think that that's all we really need to do. And the spy, he's still there. He is unlikely to die. I'm going to save him for them so that they have a fighting chance uh, against... <laughs> I can't even revolt him. So they have a fighting chance against Mulu's army. If anything, I want them to, you know, hurt each other. So let's continue here. Ooh. Don't to not. To the north. With only one piece of land. Okay. Honeyed words. Someone's helping us increase our imperial favor. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Oh, Liu Yu is available. Gong Sun Zan destroyed his faction. Okay, we can recruit him. Also from Liu Yu's faction. Also from Liu Yu's faction. Okay, let's take a look at their items. Uh, Liu Yu is the only one worth recruiting in this case. Pick him up. We're gonna shift him into administrator role because we don't really need Grand Commandants right now. We get a reform every other turn. Kind of crazy getting used to it. I think we go for the tax building. The level 3 upgrade in the future. Ooh, you are our administrator, but you are also going to be a future faction leader. I guess for now, this helps us while he's not a faction leader. Uh, given this situation, I think we do go up there and wipe them out first. We'll take the land route, that way we can heal a little bit longer. So maybe we should just give them a real army and have them go wipe that out. That might be the solution. Okay, they fought. They lost, but he's weakened. Is there still a garrison? There's still a garrison here. They have a chance if they sit back in the city. Looks like they're not doing that, so he might be in trouble. He's on cooldown because he got knocked out. Well, if he dies, he dies. Just two bronze items. Not going to be the end of the world. There's no building to be built either. Alright, I'm going to groom you. He gets no desire from a uh, higher office, so he's going to be pretty good leveling up. Everyone else is fine. We have an upgrade here. Even though it's likely I'll end up giving away this commandery, there's also the chance I might just keep it. This doesn't help us. I think we'll take this upgrade before we upgrade the town. We do have a lot of cash. I do recognize that. But we also don't technically have the right units to run the army that I would want to run. I guess we wouldn't do Juggernauts since we're fighting a town, it's a level 1 town. Anyone have flaming shots? He does, they both do. I'm trying to not over invest. So the cool thing is, I have Steward of the Trangla Palace unlock, which is something I feel like I should give him for the 10% commerce that he will boost in a very nice commandery, so I think I can start with this. Give them a nice army, I mean, particularly him, this is going to be crucial. And we said we wanted to try these. They're also quite cheap. I mean, all the range units are quite cheap. Yeah, I'm particularly fond of repeating crossbowmen. The damage looks like nothing, but it's just not calculated that way. In each clip, each arrow does this much damage, but there's multiple arrows in each clip, and they get 40 ammo. Seems like all range units get ridiculous amount of ammo here. So I feel like I can put these to good use to maybe counter infantry, suppression as well, for charge. And then over here, I'm definitely going to go with some of the purple units that we have. Just not sure which ones. Axe warriors are also new. They're weak against cavalry, but they break shielded units. Nanyuo warriors are good against infantry, weak against cavalry. Yeah, so we're kind of worried about the anti-cavalry element of this army, so we definitely need a few of these, even though we are a sentinel. We can also run Nanyuo javelin throwers. I'm going to do two of these. Axe 103. 
Yeah, I feel like these Axe units are stronger. Not defensively, but just offensively stronger. And with 55% range block chance plus the shield wall, it's a frontal 100% range block chance. Which is kind of overkill, because then they just won't shoot at you. But the damage profile is kind of good. Oh, we can also run these as anti-calves. Right, maybe we should stick to purple. We'll run these as anti-calves. Oh, they're not lined up right. Okay, so we want two axe. Two of these. We can even run two of these sort of anti-cav, anti-infantry mixture. And then she's going to go retinue-less. I actually don't know why she's still in this army. Just to keep them happy. And an extra cavalry, I guess. Everyone should be full healed in a few turns. A little bit longer than I wanted, but it's fine. Alright, that's all I'm going to recruit for them. Boost our income a little bit. And we're fine. Let's continue for now. Alright, it's nice that they're straight up being aggressive with us. Lady Jerome's doing really well. We have a new kid. Zhongyang also got wiped. Yeah, also got wiped. It's fairly aggressive. Lots of fighting. Now I expect items on them as well, faction leaders. Now where are you from? Nanha. That's close to us. Do I trust you? Well, I should. He has a grudge. He's disloyal though. So I think what I'm going to do is actually... I'm going to hire both of them. But I'm probably going to not use him. This is just the armor pickup. And then we'll fire him right off the bat. I'm not sure... Oh, Black Mountain Marauders. They're pretty liberal about who gets what items. Now we'll take up this horse, given that we are a faction leader. I'm gonna strip you of this too. Alright, we're also gonna pass this to our faction leader. Oh, they marched out. Interesting. They're coming to attack our large town. If we wall up, they can't see just right off the bat. Bias us a couple turns. Can I swap you? With, say, Jung? Yeah, I can. Okay. That way we get some cavalry here. Black Mountain Marauders. They have Scare. Disciplined, Raider, no stock, right? No stock, yeah. He's only level 2, so the option for cavalry is rather limited. Now, instead of getting rid of that unit, we're temporarily going to give him... What does he have? He's a Peasant Raider? Hmm. They are cheap. Alright, we like that. We're just going to go cheap here on him. I'm going to use the money to rush this up, so now it's safe. Whatever we build is not going to actually finish because he's going to siege us. Surplus market here for minus six reserve. We are only increasing one reserve here. Counter corruption is probably not needed at this point. We're going to give them 15% replenishment. Ooh, Mulu took it. Okay. I mean, not shocked. That was expected. Ooh. 
Why don't you come here and boost uh, peasantry? Level 5. Extra units for all units per season. Capture rate. Night battle. Night battle is probably worth the most here right now. Alright, that way if he goes sieging, we can move into him. Force him into a tough fight. Building wise, we're going to upgrade this. And we're kind of out of money. Wait, rebellion soon? Right. That's why we have this army coming. No elephants or nothing fancy here. No one has patience. So it really doesn't matter that much who leads. We're going to move 69% ambush chance. Yeah, they really pick interesting numbers here. I'll take the 74, and we'll just wait for them to run into us. And we'll just torch them. Alright, sounds good. Let's um, make sure there's nothing really we can do. We could change tax rates. Um, but I don't think we need to push for that. Point four, my point five to get into a war with Huangzhou down the line. Unless you have something good to offer me, I don't think I'm going to put my neck out for you. Yep, nope. Alright, that's it. Let's see if they fall for the ambush. Alright, the ambush failed, so we got a open field battle, which actually I kind of prefer, to be honest. So, we'll fight this. We also had night battle, because we're attacking side. Uh, they don't trust that we'll win, but clearly they don't know the power of our fire weapons. So, let's get into the battle. Alrighty, so lots of forest between us, which is good and bad. Probably mean we have to pull back uh, to over here. Actually, we don't have flaming shot, do we? Hmm. In that case, I mean, this gives up a lot of shots, though. Like, we don't want to start with them in range. We have so many extra shots that we feel like it's better off we just start off, you know, out of range. We just, like, maybe just, like, here. Like, the forest is not that dense, so we can actually see through it for the most part, and get a pretty good forest fire going. We're short one machine, which is why we have way too many extra men compared to who we have to protect. So we have like basically one extra here, there's like an empty slot. That's fine, um, not my units all have really bad range as well, so we don't really have to worry too much about that. They rarely have unit charging at us. There we go. Their generals are probably the only one who could potentially flank us. Put these in reserve. Put these really in reserve as well. Uh, now we don't even see them. You want to be a secret scout for us? He's hidden. Let's hope he can stay that way. Alright, this way I know when I can start firing. They don't see any of our units, so they might scout around, but once we start firing... And I think we can start firing now. 35 shots, just way too many for open field fights. For siege battles, sure. 45, like 35 is excellent. They're so wide, they can probably bump into us. Like, this is uncomfortably directed at an invisible unit. Like, look at the AI. Like, can you make it any more obvious you're cheating? Alright, I'll pull them back.
Yeah, we have no means of fire attacking the forest, except for the Juggernauts, which is only going to cover the front parts, but the flank looked pretty secure too. Not going to worry too much about it. Run them back. Mm, now we're firing a little bit blind, but I think it'd be still okay. Here they come. And there goes one unit. Alright, you guys are on your own. Our turn to flank them. All units unbreakable. Flank out. Yeah, all frontal attacks will fail because of our juggernauts. Now the question is, do I want to turn them really aggressive and just start flanking this line? There'd be some friendly fires here, but this would be quite strong. As you can imagine some of the shots we can do here. We can pinpoint a fire location. Like that. And then when we range out there, it's a little annoying. Charge out. I'm gonna leave them alone. Oh, you guys are over chasing. Try this. I might hit these guys. Back off a little. Ooh, danger close. Don't do that. Pull them back. Alright, that one jet is enough. Hopefully knock them out. Alright, we still got some generals behind us. I can't really turn these around anymore. I'm gonna abandon machine. You guys have to step up and defend. And I'm just gonna have to give you guys some stat boost here. Where's our other you? Good. Not really gonna have them fire anyone now. Chase down the range unit. Chase these into the forest. Kill them. Come get the generals, I guess. Move them out. Alright, easy win. Alright, we can move on to Zanku. Pick up a trade port there. Zanku, obviously, a very good commander to grab as well. 
I am going to take replenishment actually. Ooh, Lady Drew helping us out there. We have a 10 turn food deal with them, but it should go away soon. Oh, well, soon, as in seven turns, but. Uh, they took a beating, but we're not going to wait for them. They retreated that way, I believe. So we're going to spot into here. Yeah, seeing that they're still there is a little bit troublesome. We can't reach anyways. We might as well do another ambush. Get them to bump into us again. That would be a good outcome. They didn't start the siege, which means we have even one more turn to just sit around if we want. Yeah, that would probably be best, actually. No rush. Could they die for this? No, they can't reach there. Alright, so nothing to be really scared of. Mulu sits over here. Maybe go wipe them out for us. Then we don't have to do it. Honestly, no particular interest in grabbing any of them. And honestly, he, he doesn't do much. I can just extract him, I guess. We'll take his items when he comes back, and we can look for other spies in the future. Ah, bandit character. I think we'll pass on all three of them. Yeah, no items to really entice us either. Administrator level up, unhappy, middle child, um, sibling jealousy. Uh, what should I give you? I can give you a title. We have so many titles to give out, so much money to pay for them. And once again, another reform. I think they double the corruption reduction on these two. Maybe there is a trade partner? Nope. I mean, we're still going for the Onyx Dragon Rush, so I think that's fine. Not that much commerce here, but I think I have boost everywhere else that's relevant as well. Particularly, oh, wait, wait, no, here. This is the one that would need one if it doesn't have one, but it does. So I guess you would come here. The 15% replenishment did not kick in. Why only 12%? I thought that assignment was 15%. Yeah. We have someone with minus 3% replenishment here in the army? Why are we getting penalized? Wow, his upkeep is extra pricey. We gotta reroll that if we have a chance. I mean, he's a burn officer. We're not gonna really, you know, care too much about that. Alright, why do we have 3% penalty? That's a little weird. Anyways, we should be fine. Let's see if they bump back into us again. Ooh, They're up there. And this time it worked like a charm. And we should have a very favorable delegate here. So we're just going to take that. No capture chance really, even on decisive for the leader. Maybe he'll drop item. That overseer looks pretty nice. Okay, we got one item. Yeah, if you're not gonna have elephants, I'm just gonna send you home. I mean, I could use him. Formidable, cheerful, and graceful are not bad. Scarred is even a great injury trait. 
Unit's obviously subpar, but we can just give him our own units. His background is the Initiate Commander, which is good for Gorilla and Night Battle. That is actually... Yeah, we'll take him. I'll take Replenishment. I feel like the AIs are very aggressive against each other. Scholar at the gates. Now, this is a very common occurrence in the south, historically. Which one is it this time? Chongbing? Okay. Um, oof. Simon character? Maybe. I mean, he's level 5, right? So, I can use him for... Oh, he's back so quick. All these nice infantry on him. What happened to your items? They stripped them from you. He's a farmer with good assignments, desire for higher office. Right, so we're gonna have to start assigning them to the higher office. Same thing with you. Alright, we'll pick up the battle related stuff first because it seems like this game mode plus the mod, or records plus mod, is going to kind of force us into being heavily focused on fighting. And Dong Tuna's faction is wiped. Now there's no way this is a close victory. We are fighting this because this is going to be clean. Alright. We are... I prefer to fight here, but given how the forests look, that's not that good. I could go on the opposite side, much more flatter here. But that gate is a bit... Actually, we'll stay here. It's okay. Um, I assume they might just charge out, given they're just a garrison. We'll just set up right on the edge here. Yeah, we don't even have a full mount. Not charging out. Okay. They got a death wish. They can have it. I'll take out the towers and then pound them with our 35 shots or 34 shots and then move these babies up. 49 shots of flamethrower jets to kill them. Ah, here they come. They realize waiting is just a dying game here. And the Jets of Flame has started. There's a slight problem with forest fire burning ourselves. Just gonna send him out to loop around to kill the range units, because none of the infantry is gonna come anywhere close to us.
doesn't do anything. Actually, the armor might actually help reduce the damage they take. Over? Getting shot? Oh, shoot them. Okay, it's over. That single tower is going to do some damage. Alright, piece of cake. One more faction gone. Now, they actually had fire air archers, even though they don't have that ability, and we can vassalize them if we want. No. No, we're not going to do that to the Naman factions. We're just going to take their land. Yeah, Duosi also declared war on us, which is pretty good, given that it looks like he only has one territory as well. We'll just continue to carve them up, pick up the rest of the Zanko by taking out the Zanko tribe, and then we'll see where that gets us. I feel like post-battle loot is also kind of insane. They're giving you a lot of money per battle. Alright, they finally started their siege. So I feel like we can just march on right to the reinforcement zone. And force them to break the siege. Okay, we're not within the zone. I feel like we are though, aren't we? No? We're a little short? Huh. Okay. I mean, I guess they can take it and then we'll retake it. It's always easier to use siege weapons in actually a siege. Sure, we'll lose, you know, commandery for a turn, but it's not really gonna damage us. There's also gonna be a rebel spawn here next turn, too. We'll take a look. Does this mean they're all on the field? His entire faction are on the field? Yeah, it seems so. I'm gonna just stash the points for now. Yes, his entire faction are on the field. Are they at war with... Yeah, they are at war with the Han. Okay. Everyone's super aggressive. Alright, I guess we don't really have a place to really spend that money. We could summon out a new army, technically. To maybe attack them while they're gone. We just need a very small force to beat this. Yeah, let's do that. Let's sneak an army behind. He doesn't have reach. Right. We still have the 15% mustering boost, a re replenishment boost for a little bit. Which will help this army get ready and then they can just sail across and take the level 1 while they're busy over here. And our economy can definitely afford it, so let's continue. Alright, they're taking the city. We're gonna make them feel it, because it's records mode, the generals can't do any crazy stuff. So we're gonna try our best to deal some damage to them. Right, I'm assuming they probably built a siege weapon during the turn that they sieged. Right here. Okay, they have a tower. Okay, that's, a, that's an interesting choice. Um, they are our counter infantry options, so if they're doing towers here, I think we just have to do something like this to hold against that. 
they are spreading out pretty thin. This isn't the easiest wall to fight. One group here. One group here. Let's guard this corner a little bit. What is this? Okay, mercenary archers. I feel like they're, they're not going to come alone, right? So I guess we could have... We'll also stash a captain unit over here in case they need help. That leaves us with nobody, right? No, we got one guy back here. I don't think we need to protect the center. If they break, they breach the walls, we're pretty much doomed. So we're just gonna try to hold. If they do breach, how do we want to defend the interior? Block this, block this, so they can't use any of that exit. They have to come through these towers. Block this as well, same logic. Forcing them this way, essentially. Or they can go this way. Which is, I mean, we can't block everything. Yeah, that's probably what we want to do here. I don't know where the rest of the units are, but hopefully they're not behind us. It's a foggy day. killed anyone yet. Ooh. Mainly attacking the center here. Thin out our defense a little. Archer units trying to fire after climbing up? Fancy that. We're fighting their generals that are now on foot, but probably really strong. Yeah, we weren't able to spread, but at least we made everyone in combat. They landed this, but we have one unit here who's ready in place, and we're trying to smack everyone else. Now they're going to sneak some cavalry back, they're going to dismount and try to climb from behind. We can't really stop this, so we're just going to, you know, try to deal as much damage as we can. That's the goal of this fight. Danyang recruits. Now, Dayang is famous for, I believe, no, I mean, Lu Jiang is famous for spear, you know, I don't even know if Dayang is famous for anything. Ooh, it feels like they have control of the wall already. These are the general bodyguards. Very low evasion, actually.
I mean, this is where we had most of our units, our spear units. They're getting pushed back already from the front wall to the back wall. What about you guys? You guys can't take care of the team militia? Focus fire. I think they're in. This is like, this is like the one fight I think we can win. Uh-oh. There we go. This guy's out of position. I mean, the good thing is when you climb walls, you get fatigued. Bad thing is, I feel like we're getting overwhelmed. Our captain's already gone. Spread thin and picked off by so many enemy units. Alright, you guys are out of ammo. Throw yourself into melee combat. Defend this side because I want to force them to enter through that side. Unless we got some sort of flank going on here. These are what? Liang Kai swordsmen. Okay. Swords out, boys. Alright, everyone here is dead. This spear unit is dying. We barely injure them. Alright, we lost our victory point. We are punishing them a little bit right now. I'm surprised the morale is still maintaining at this point. Now we're losing more men than they are. Which is ridiculous. Alright, they're finally coming over here. Alright, we're finally getting some damage from that. We're losing soldiers left and right. As long as they don't rouse. I don't think he will survive this ring of towers. These are nice spears. They look good. Capture the, all these towers slowly. Oh no, they're routing. Ah, we gave it a good shot. We caused a decent amount of casualties for them. And now we get to siege them. Action council ready to convene. Yes, do we have everyone in the position? Yes. It's only two, it doesn't overlap. This one's a set item, but the income is always tempting. Hopeful construction time. Can we... Well, first off, do I want to refresh? I guess I might. Not that he has a lot of wasted skills, but still. Jeltrip. Yeah, I think I would want Jeltrip more than I would want Hopeful. Can't really say no to a set item. Although income, as you can see, it's kind of stretched, but still positive. And that's after we lost the commandery and the administrator role as well.
Where is his army? I'm kind of scared. Like, what if we get ambushed? What is his army strength? Seems like we have a pretty high relative army strength to him, but believing that he has no army is kind of hard. Huh. Wants to hit and run? No thanks. Ah, it's behind. Okay, okay. Good. I'm just gonna starve this out. We can always come back to this next episode. Uh, we will fight it, um, but this first. I want to avenge my city. I'm not exactly favored, but we would enjoy a siege with 29 shots at them. I like my chances. Let's go. Alrighty. Same town, same look. Stay away from this tower group. Go behind, I guess, is where we want to fight. Um, given the number of shots we have, we can pretty much wipe out a whole wall, I'm pretty sure. We also have fire on these. Oh, this would be beautiful. Okay. Alright, let's start the show. I think we missed the main structure for the most part. We hit a lot of the gate, but we missed the main fort tower. And we didn't miss hard enough to burn any of the town, so that's also kind of disappointing, but... We still missed, but at least the town's burning now. I'm glad we have 29 shots. That's not a promising start here. That was a good shot. That was wonderful. Let's do the same on this side. Nope. Ah, uh, roof shots don't count. Yep. There we go. Alright, switching ammo, crushing walls for a little bit. Sixty, seventy percent. That's actually pretty decent on one fire. Nice. Continue. They have pretty limited range choices. Yeah, two shots per wall is decent. They like to use a lot of formations, which is nice. Just want to thin out the archer crowd. There we go. I think they lost most of their range units. This is one that's left, but we can't really touch this one. I 
方城墙已破。Oh, this is gonna be hard to take care of too. So these are 100% from the front. Will the AI fire at us? Is a question. Right, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. I guess two. Let's trade you guys up. I'm gonna use these, but only after their enemy range threat is neutralized. Which is basically just these guys and these guys. I believe that's it. Everyone else has died on the wall. Let them squeeze through. Yep. Now I don't like these formations. They'll be difficult for us to actually target, so we will use our flaming shot to try to break them. I think we'll coordinate with our attack later. Now, when this wall crashes, half of this unit should die. Half that's like right here. Or at least a quarter. Oh, they're running away. That would kill like eight of them. Yeah, these right here died. Right, they're reforming their shield walls. Isn't it a little crowded over here? Yeah, we're gonna save the shots to break the formation when our crossbowmen are up. So here's what we're gonna do. Open, close. Uh, too fast? No. Nope. Pretty good. So the problem here is to for them to waste all their ammo is going to take a while. So at 100% it's not that great for us. What if we just tank it? We can tank it at... It doesn't help us. Twenty-four, fifty-five. All right, lose formation. We'll just take it. Tank all their ammo with 55% range block chance. Get our assault forces ready. to put our repeating crossbowmen to the test. I don't think they'll switch targets. I mean, these are perfectly fine targets for them to hit, but I think they'll ignore these for now. Alright, we're gonna have them break this formation, then break this formation. Fire well. That 
that's one ammo, by the way. They reload quite a long time, but that's one ammo, which is a bunch of arrows. Alright, stop for a second. It's just the shower down here. Yeah, as long as I don't go back into shield wall, we can just fire like this. They panicked. If they just stood there, they would have been fine. But turning around and running is not wise. Oh, some of you are shooting at the wall. Uh, not the best target selection, but we're okay with that. Everyone on this side is dead. We can break that later. Frontline for them. I think repeating crossbowmen with the way their damage are kind of buffed on uh, the radius mod and the fact their ammo got buffed on radius mod becomes insanely strong because they were decently strong when it's all base damage. Now I think it's just overpowered maybe. We still have to break through shield. That part is still the same for all range units but as long as we can create some angles it should be a pretty easy wide for the most part. Their range units are all out of ammo. No rush. We'll save it for formations. Mm, their cavalry is coming quick. Box. Uh, can you guys not shoot at those guys? Yeah. This is just a good way to stop any charge at. In case someone makes it through. fire potential right here. behind. I'm gonna fit one right outside. Go help. Charge. 
flank out from this side. Pound that. Mm, no good target, huh? I guess they're killing the ones on the wall. That's fair game. Any chance you guys can pinpoint a target behind? Yeah, that's relatively friendly fire free. We can accept that. Maybe this unit is even easier to do that? Not sure. Feels like they're just forcing us to actually beat them straight up. We have cavalry too, just kind of clogged. Not a really good entry point for our cavalry. We can maybe angle it this way. Flank this group, obviously. So we can't, we don't have an open shot on anyone without. Well, why are we so front? Oops. We can break in with a flank. Oh, then it's over. Goodbye. Alright, focus on the inside. We'll double team this guy. Line it up. Charge. The retreating units are getting picked off. Kill the general. to win. The line's just too thin here. Right, but this, this is a sandwich. Can I borrow one of you? We can speed this up if I borrow one of you. There we go. Ah, oh, finally cracked one of them. You guys finally have targets. Go, go, go. Don't let them run away. Unbreakable? Oh, she's actually unbreakable. Cavalry charge. Actually, we can wait. Why don't we wait? Set up on the square. All the infantry pull back out. Range. Set up right behind. Cavalry can wait here. They're running away from us? Oh, 
I mean, if we can end it with arrows, we're not going to end it with swords, because why have casualties? Yeah, and also suppression, so like, cavalry can't even do anything. Oh, we got the raider trait. Alright, back off a little. Oh, she died. Okay, he should rout. There we go. He's gonna die too now. Because, uh, we have no mercy to routing units. There we go. Right. We retook our city? Now, these battles in record mode and with radius rather long. Elusive, huh? Guess we still captured you. Faction leader. So releasing will still give us the item. That's a change I think the mod makes. It's a nice change. It makes sense, right? There's no reason why he should be able to leave with his items if we can- Ooh, Tycoon. We will like that. Alright, so... We'll come back next time. Um, they will be marching towards their capital. Now, they're gonna probably resummon themselves now, so maybe we'll swap jobs. Maybe I'll redo this army because they're no longer strong enough to take on the full stack once they do resummon the full stack. They probably have to go do that. I'm quite fond of the repeating crossbowmen. I think if we get heavy versions, we can definitely use that for this campaign. And elsewhere, we're going to come back to this fight. We're going to fight it cleanly, take control of it, and then defend it from them when they come back and try to retake their land, because then they will be wiped. And then we'll probably take all of Zangke while we're at it. No reason why we should stop here. Uh, there's nowhere else that really needs us. We can probably just go to war with the rest of the Naman factions. Uh, looking at this army, there is space for improvement. We can look to add some units and uh, to see what we need. Um, so far, so good. Juggernauts carrying the day. And uh, we'll come back and pick things up from here. So until then, bye!